There's understandably been a lot of fallout and reaction to that game from Manchester United yesterday. But one piece of reaction, one particular player's reaction, Paul Popper's interview after the game, for me is particularly interesting. And I want to run through it with you this morning. I want to take a look at what Paul Popper had to say. Is he right about Manchester United's problems? Matt Man United's problems under Solskjaer? The mistakes that keep getting repeated? And everything. I'm going to run through that interview with you this morning. Please drop a like on the video and subscribe if you're new. But it's quite important that we run through this interview together. We've had plenty of you know bad games under Solskjaer. Over the years we have. And plenty of great moments too. Let's not forget those. But there was a reaction from that game against Leicester yesterday that was new. That was uh, more compounded. It was, a, it, was a, it was more intense and stronger. Uh, that comes in Solskjaer even admitting after the game that he didn't know what needed changing. And in this interview from Paul Pogba, where he pretty much says the same thing. And I want to, look, let's just listen to part of it anyway. Paul, a difficult afternoon. Where do you feel the game was really lost? Uh, to be honest, you know, um, we've, been, we've been having those kind of games for, for a long time. And we haven't found the like the problem we need to find us the problem to to concede goals easy goals say stupid goals popper here is completely and utterly spot on what we saw there against leicester might have been one of the worst if not the worst example of it but that sort of performance from manchester united it really is nothing new and that's why the frustrations have really boiled over for United fans. This isn't any knee-jerk reaction to that 4-2 defeat against Leicester. Although the performance was so bad, I'd say you'd arguably say it's fair enough if it's a knee-jerk reaction. But it's not. If you look at even across the course of just this season, we're only, what, eight games into the Premier League. You can talk about uh, the game away at Southampton. Manchester United, very poor in our shape. We got a draw, but that was down to Mason Greenwood. Uh, United were poor, really poor, overrunning midfield in that game. Wolves on the back foot for the majority of the game. David De Gea, was it an incredible double save he made in that game? Mason Greenwood popped up and we got a 1-0 win. And then you're looking at more recent games and you've got young boys away from home in the Champions League. Then you've got West Ham at home in the League Cup. Then you've got Aston Villa at home in the Premier League. Then you've got Villarreal at home in the Champions League. Then you've got Everton at home in the Premier League. It's a consistent level of patterns and problems that have manifested itself into this particular situation. So like Pob was saying there, Man United conceding stupid goals. Stupid, stupid goals that a Premier League team with a top-class defence in terms of personnel, De Gea who was our best player against Leicester and we lost 4-2. That says a lot. We've got, you know, Maguire had arguably, well, not arguably, it was just his worst ever performance in the United shirt. 50-50. Yes, Oli shouldn't have played him, but Maguire was crap. But then we've got Varane, sure, Wan-Bissaka. Man United's defence should not be playing like that. And the problems have been repeating. Repeating and repeating and repeating. And I've always said it. There's nothing wrong with making any sort of mistakes in life. You need to learn. That's how you learn and grow as an adult. But if you make the same mistake constantly again and again and again and the same outcome comes and you don't change anything, it means you're either ignorant to your own problems or you're not good enough to fix those problems. And clearly, as Pob is intimating there, Man United have got a ton of problems. And for so many of you, that problem is Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. And until he leaves... He won't, it won't change at Manchester United. But let's continue with this Paul Popper interview and see what else he did have to say. We need to be, you need to be more mature, I think. We need to play with more experience. Arrogance in a good term, meaning that we there, we have to take the ball and play our, our football. But now you have to find what's, what's the key of this, uh, this change and this game that we lose, because I think we deserve to lose today. No United fan is going to argue that we didn't deserve to. We completely deserve to lose and probably 4-2 as well. And yeah, that arrogance, it's something that we've missed for so long. If I'm being completely honest, I thought Paul Pobble was poor in himself against uh, Leicester. I think he won like zero tackles in midfield, two out of 15, 16 ground duels. He was, he, he was, he's part of the problem. Yes, he's symptomatic of the problem that we have in midfield. It doesn't matter. 
And that's that for me is a big thing that changed uh, against Leicester. I've been calling to see Man United playing with Matic and Paul Pogba in midfield. I've always felt that it's going to be the most balanced midfield, the midfield most likely of being able to receive the ball from our defenders, play it out from the back and play it through. And then in that game, we tried to play it out from the back, ignored our midfielders who were there, went to Maguire who didn't go to the ball that we can see the equaliser. Dumb as hell. Dumb as hell. And then Matic and Pogba, so static by comparison of Sumari and Tielemans, they did what they want in midfield. Brendan Rodgers said after the game, United's midfielders were so, were not pressing, so we just did what we wanted. We just basically waited patiently until the right pass was on and played it through because that pressing game wasn't there. That arrogance wasn't there. And United just don't really show respect to any opponents, which is a bit of a, a sort of a juxtaposition when I'm talking about arrogance and then talking about respect. But if we respected all opponents, we would sit in a far more compact shape and we don't, out of possession. Out of possession, I'm not sure there's a worse team than Manchester United in the Premier League. It's been that case for a long, long time. And look, you can see in Paul Pobber's expression here, he's kind of, he's a bit lost for words. But he goes into more detail. Let's look at the rest of the interview. When you say you've been playing this type of game for a long time, do you feel it is a team that's making the same mistakes and not learning? Yeah, yeah, I think it's all of us. It's all of us. We need to find. We need to find something. We need to change something. It is everybody, and, and this is where you get the chicken or the egg argument. Is it the players? Is it the manager? It's not either. It's both. Uh, the players ultimately are reflective of what the manager tells them to do. And Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, you know, I've been a supporter of him for a long time, and I still support. I, he doesn't have my one hundred percent support, like the club tried to come out yesterday and say, but. We have been making the same mistakes over and over again. And I don't know if there's a solution inside the club anymore. I don't, I've really, I've really questioned whether there is. As I said, that's what's changed for me after that uh, game against Leicester. Just to, to, we've had problems and, you know, they've all sort of manifested themselves across the course of the season. But what we saw there against Leicester was just, uh, it, it was shambolic. And Pogba is right as well. We need to change something. And if, 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 if that involves changing the personnel, playing McTominay at the base of a midfield three against Villarreal or playing Pogba and Matic in a midfield two against Leicester or playing, I don't know, the, the formations and the players have changed. But Manchester United's performances haven't changed. Manchester United's defensive shape hasn't changed. The problems haven't changed. The problems have only got worse. And that's what these 10 fixtures needed to be for... Well, that's the opposite of what they needed to be for Solskjaer. It's what they were for Solskjaer. The real acid test. After the disappointments of the continued lack of progression that we've seen this season, despite, you know, only being two points off top, of course, that game against Leicester there, at the beginning of these 10 games, really raises into question whether or not Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is suitable and whether or not these coaches are just capable of fixing these problems. Hell, Eric Ramsey came in. I praised him for Man United's slight improvement in not conceding from set pieces. And then we were in absolute shambles yesterday. I don't know if it's the mindset of all of us, the players, when we start. Um, we really don't know. It's frustrating because it's something that we don't understand and we have to find out very fast because if you want to compete and if you want to win the title, it's, it's those games that you have to win, even though that they are very hard. Even though that we're playing away, you need to find their game. You need to find the the right uh, mentality, the right tactic to win those games. I think that's uh, that's my fault. Then we have we really have time to think about it. Um, then after all together, we have to stay stick together and and find the the problem. For me, at this point in the interview, Paul Pop is basically it's kind of lost for words. Really, he doesn't know what to say or maybe he does know what to say but doesn't want to say it in public that's another way you can look at it and I, I feel like there's going to be a lot of people biting their tongue now and I'm definitely going to be one of them I'm not going to be here shouting Oli out there's part of me which is Oli out and part of me which always has been all right I'm not I've never been 100% supportive of Solskjaer because I can see the problems I can see the path we're going down but after that game there against Leicester the justification for me to keep supporting Solskjaer has dwindled quite significantly. That's that, that that's what's changed for me after that game. It's not just the manner of the defeat. I mean, of course, it's part of it, but 
It's the sustained continuation of Manchester United's problems. It's the lack of progress. And it's actually them getting worse. It's them getting worse there. And Solskjaer there making his decision to start Maguire. Would it have been a different game if Bayer played? Yeah, I think he actually would have been. A horrendous decision. And a manager lives or dies by his own decisions. It was a risk he took. It was a risk that backfired. A bit like when Ronaldo um, started on the bench against Everton. It was a risk he took, and given that we drew one all, maybe you could say it was a risk that backfired. But Popper's demeanour there in the interview, I think, is very reflective of Manchester United fans right now. All of us are sitting here going, what is going on? What is going on? And as a player, he can't really say more than that. And for me, that interview there from Paul Popper was quite, quite a big moment, in my opinion, to hear somebody uh, like Popper coming out, speaking so... I suppose, honestly, about the situation, it's basically just going, look, none of us know how to fix this. And the players, they shouldn't be tasked with that. It's not their job. It's their job to play football on the pitch, go home, enjoy themselves with their family. That's their job. Cool. Their job is not to tactically improve Manchester United's system, shape, defensive transitions. That's not their job. That's down to Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, Mike Phelan, Kieran McKenna, Michael Carrick. And ultimately, all four of them are failing. Carrick and McKenna were here under Mourinho. They've stayed through. Now they're here. Have we seen massive progression in terms of their coaching ability? I don't think we have. Is Mike Phelan doing his job behind the scenes? I've, I think Mike Phelan was massively responsible for the first three years of Solskjaer and helping him rebuild the club. But I question whether Mike Phelan deserved a new contract. I don't know whether Solskjaer needed or deserved a new contract in the summer. United have made their bed with Solskjaer and came out yesterday with reports from the Athletic saying that he's got 100% backing of the club. That's bullshit. In my opinion, that's that's bullshit. I don't think he's got 100% backing. There's no way that with the perform with the way that Manchester United are playing this season that he can have 100% support. But where do you stand? Do you think Paul Pogba is right in what he's saying? I think Paul Pogba is completely fair in what he's saying and right. For me, the problem is coaching, and it's and Solskjaer is part of that. So of course, Solskjaer is part of the problem. It's whether or not sacking Manchester, sacking him right now, is that, and getting an interim manager in. This is what I mean. Like, for me to be Ollie out, I need to know what's on the other side of that fence. I need to know uh, because I, I've I've been through Van Howe. I've been through. I don't need to describe and explain this yet. But that's why I'm not completely just pointing the finger and saying Ollie out, man. It's it, it's it's all well and good saying that, but we need to know what comes next. And what you can see from that demeanor from Paul Popper is. I don't think Paul Pogba knows what's coming next. We've got Atalanta, that's physic, that's literally coming next, and then Liverpool. And the way the Man United played against Leicester, that game against Liverpool could be a real final name on the coffin for Solskjaer. In the, in the idea, I remember when it was um, Moyes. Was it Moyes? I think it was Moyes. Uh, when we played Liverpool and City within a week at Old Trafford, and we got pumped both times. And at that point, I was like, I'm done. I'm done. Um... Was it Mourinho away at Liverpool after that game, I think? And I was like, I'm done. I'm done. It's these big games against our big rivals in pressure moments like this where if United don't turn it around and perform. But it's not just about turning it around in the game now, is it? It's about fixing the issues and the problems that we see. So an individual performance might gloss over those problems. Mate, it's a tough situation for United right now. Let me know what you think about that Paul Popper interview in the comments below. As I said... It's kind of refreshing, I suppose, to see someone speaking so honestly after what was a gut-wrenching performance. Popper's sort of demeanour really reflective, I would say, of the fans' moods after the game. But what do you think about what Paul Popper would say? Is he right about Solskjaer, Solskjaer's future, and I suppose Manchester United's future under Solskjaer? Please let me know what you think in the comments below and subscribe to United People's TV if you're new. But it's not going to be a good... It's not going to be a good week for United now. And we've got Atalanta coming up straight away. A must-win game for United.